All right, the easiest way to add videos to your blog using the quality selector is the auto quality selector. And the easiest way is to use the float player drive. Now, this Maxima player is integrated with the float player API and you upload your video to float player. Let me bring you over to float player. There's float player here. All you need to simply do is once you log in, you simply just click on upload and upload your video. But you see that I have uploaded three of them and after you upload, it actually transcodes it to a lot of different formats automatically and makes them really easy for you to access. Now you can see that when I hover over this here, I can click on this where it says embed code, this little icon for, for code. If I click on there, you can see exactly what's happening here inside this, inside this code here. Um, if I just trans go over, you see that there's the different qualities here. There is the different qualities that I can use for this video. Uh, 1080p, 720p, 360p, and 216p. All four of those. And the default, all right, it says a data default is a, is a 360. So the, so the default video is a 360, and I can use all four resolutions of those. Okay, isn't that, isn't that cool? And let me just close that up. And so let me just come down below. And here's my Maxima player. And I'll just link up to the click on add video from Flow Player Drive. And when I do that, the same dashboard comes up. It's connected to their API. And I select this thumbnail right there. And when I do that, it's auto populated. All the fields are auto populated, including the HLS. Now remember, in order for the auto quality selector to work, the HLS video URL must be there. The RTMP URL is for Flash browsers for live streaming. So for Flash browsers, you got the RTMP, and for HTML5, you got the HLS, which allows you to have the auto quality selector. It also auto populates the splash image, the flash fallback. Now, it did a little bit of a mistake. Sometimes when you use the Flow Player Drive auto insert, it makes a little bit of a mistake, and the mistake is right here. You'll notice that the mistake on this one is that it added the 1080p as the default. This one is correct. There is no p in, there's no resolution p inside the default video file. So you simply just come here and you just delete that. And remember, the WebM and the MP4, these two lines, these two fields, are your default video files. All right, so sometimes you need to make that correction. After that, you just set your settings. Also right here, your default video quality. Remember, you need to change that. And the reason why it's 1080p auto populated is because it made the mistake up here. All right, so you need to come down below and change it to 360p. That's the default, remember. And also there's four video qualities and, need, and add the 360p because there's four of them, remember. Uh, if you go back to here, there's one, two, three, four. Here they are. One, two, three, four. And a default is a 360p. All right. Once you've done that, there's four in, in, inserted. Simply come and you're all set to go. Update it. Now, if I watch the video, let me just refresh. Let me refresh this. And it's now refreshed. If I click on play, you see that the auto is selected. You see that? And it's got the 216, it's got the 360, 720, and 1080p. So now it's based on your network speed. So whatever, if you have a, a fast internet speed, it's going to give you a nice 1080p resolution. If you have, if you're on a mobile device with a slow internet connection, it's going to give you a 216. So if I click on 216, you notice that the quality is going to be a little bit blurry. If I click on the 1080p, it's going to be crystal, crystal clear for video quality. Thank you.